Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still on our industrial electronics revisions. Uh, yes, we've been talking about uh, uh, the concept of our Thevenin's theorem, which is fine, uh, but just if a person that we want to consider, so I'm not going to waste much time. Uh, I just want to encourage you guys to be part of the membership, uh, join the membership if you check on our main page, there is the join button. There's the, that join that you can actually uh, be part of the members. Uh, this enables you to give us uh, feedback, questions to work on, topics to work on, which is very, very important as we are revising towards our exams. And also it gives us, uh, it supports us to create these videos uh, each and every day. Uh, so that you'll be able to reach you guys uh, before you write your exams. Uh, so I want to thank all the members. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the members, whether you joined for mathematics, then you are having industrial electronics also, or you joined for engineering science, uh, any membership that you joined for. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for supporting this family uh, of Mason African Motives. So I'm not going to waste much time, like I said, uh, here we are given question number 1.1 1 .1, uh, or the uh, Kirchhoff's law, uh, which is the voltage law, explain the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So remember the Kirchhoff's voltage law is taken from a closed loop in this case we are going to consider or to be working with a closed loop. So we've got uh, two questions that we can have. That is the algebraic sum uh, of the voltages around any closed path which is a closed loop must be equal to zero, or you can be talking about it in terms of the algebraic sum of voltages in the circuit is equal to the voltage applied. These are the voltage drops. So you shall be talking about uh, the voltage drop, the sum you are adding, uh, the voltage drops across the circuit. That is uh, the sum of uh, V1, the sum of uh, V2, depending with the voltage drops that you're going to have, it must give us the total voltage in a closed uh, loop or in a closed circuit. So that was the condition of our question, just to explain. Uh, then the current law, you'll be talking about the sum of current at a point, at a junction must be equal to zero, or the sum of current through uh, must be equal to the sum of current away. The sum of current that is flowing towards the junction must be equal to the current flowing away from the junction. That is, if it was about the current, but this one, it was on the voltage. All right, this is not the major part of my question. My major part of the question was this one, which is uh, study the second diagram below and answer the questions. All right, so that was our second diagram and we are given, explain how you calculate the current flowing through RA4 using the superposition theorem. All right, then we have got the calculate the current through RA5 using the Venice theorem. That is the major part of my question here. But as we can see, we have got 1.21 that we need to talk about. They're saying explain the steps, how you are going to calculate the current flowing through RA4. RA4, that is this one, using superposition. Remember, superposition is whereby you have to short the voltage either the 10 volt or the four, uh, the 12 volt, you calculate the currents, you do for the other one, you calculate the currents, then you combine them at the end, depending with the flow of current that you're having. So this is what we are having here in uh, short. Let me just show you this part. In uh, short, we are simply saying, it's either you're going to first short circuit of 12 volt supply, or you're going to short the 12, uh, the 10 volt, depending with which one that you want to work with. Then after short the circuit, if you start with the 12 volt, you are going to work with 10 volt on the other part. If you start with 10 volt, therefore you are going to work with 12 volt, all right? Then we calculate the total resistance using Ohm's law, the voltages uh, cross the after the currents, then you superimpose. So this one, it's not directly what I, what I, what I want about the superposition. All right, let me uh, have this one uh, 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 explanation aside also. So remember, we've got two voltages here, uh, V1 and V2. So it's either we're going to short V1 or V2 in the first place, all right? So let me just write it this way. We are going to short circuit. Uh, we are going to short circuit uh, the 12 volt supply. Uh, in this case, 
it's either we are going to start with the 12 volt supply in this case, all right? Uh, let me, okay, I did not show this part of the screen that I want you to see guys here. All right, sorry for that. So like I said, this part is not that clear the way that they explain, so I'm gonna have it. So you're going to short circuit the 12 volt supply. As you can see here, we've got uh, the 12 volt and the 10 volt. So it's either you're gonna start with this or this one, all right? Which is the one, one important, one and the same thing they explained there. So you're going to short uh, the 12 volt supply or the what? or the 12 volt or the 10 volt uh, supply. All right, the moment you short that, what are you going to do? You are going to replace with the internal resistances. So you replace with the internal resistances, replace with, uh, all right, that's with uh, the internal resistances. So you are going to replace internal resistances for each part that you are going to short it depending with uh, the part that you started with. If you start with 12 volt, you have to replace the internal resistance for that 12 volt, all right? So that is what you're gonna do. So it's either for the 12 or for the 10 volt, depending with which part that you're going to, to, to use, all right? Therefore, you are going, after that, you're going to calculate uh, the currents flowing. So you're going to calculate, uh, calculate the currents flowing by Ohm's law. So you go back to the Ohm's law, you apply your Ohm's law to calculate uh, the current that is uh, flowing uh, in each and every branch that you are given, all right? So after that, uh, calculating these currents this time, you are going to short, you're going, if you started with 12 volt, you are going to now start, you're going to second, uh, short circuit what, the 10. If you start with the 10, you second the 12. So this is what I'm simply saying here, so this time, we are going to short the 10 followed by 12, all right? Uh, so we're just gonna short uh, circuit, all right? So you're gonna short circuit uh, the 10 volt supply. So we've got uh, the 10 volt supply or depending with which one that you started or the 12 volt supply or the 12 volt supply. So it depends guys, if you wrote this way, if you wrote 12 here, you are going to start with 12, you calculate your currents, then you work with 10. If you wrote this part, a short 10 volt, on the second part, you're going to short the 12 volt. So this is what I'm trying to say, don't confuse this part, all right? So after doing this, just like the, uh, this stage, you have to calculate the currents. So we have to calculate the currents, currents. All right, that is the currents there. So we are going to have the same thing, here we are going to calculate the currents flowing. Okay, just like the previous part, we are going to calculate uh, the currents, that is the currents are flowing by Ohm's law, all right? The currents flowing by Ohm's law. Just, just like the, 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 the last part, but this time we are considering to say we have shorted another, uh, another voltage, which is, not the one that you sh you shorted in the first place. So after doing this, this last part is to combine the currents that you calculated here and the currents that you calculated here, depending with which branch are you dealing with at the end. So you are going to superimpose, uh, to combine depending with the branch is called to superimpose. So you are going to superimpose the car, uh, the circuit, all right, superimpose uh, the circuit to find uh, the final current, all right. So you're gonna superimpose the circuit to find what? Final current, that's it. So I think uh, it's direct and it, it gives us the, the exact thing that we understand about uh, superposition theorem. Yes, uh, that part you can consider, but it's not clear to what uh, exactly what I want. To, it's not clear to the exact part that you want. So why am I considering this question on Thevenin uh, after the videos that we have done on Thevenin, you'll be wondering to say why. Uh, it's because we had a calculation. I think it was uh, actually uh, the paper of Feb 2022 exam where we had a similar consideration of two voltage sources and I explained in another way, maybe you did not understand that way, I'm just gonna explain uh, from this 
one, then you consider it or you use it to answer that question so that you check with which method that you can apply. Uh, so in this case, we are asked to calculate the current flowing through R5 using Thevenin's uh, theorem in this case, through R5. This is our R5 in this case here. So remember the concept of the Thevenin is uh, we are supposed to, if we are to calculate this current, we are supposed to uh, actually short this part that we are seeing where we are given uh, to remove, actually to open circuit. Uh, then if we, we are given a condition whereby we've got uh, those current and so and, uh, sources, we consider short circuiting and so forth. But what we are going to do is to reopen this part so that it will be uh, represented with an open circuit. But as we are opening this part, I want you also to remove this because what we know is that the current that is going to flow through this resistor R5 is the same. Depending with the voltage, you have got a voltage positive, voltage positive, these currents will flow to this branch. According to Kirchhoff's law, we are going to see that the current flowing here is going to be the same. So if the current flowing here is going to be the same, therefore, when you are removing the R5 removed together with the other resistors that are being combined uh, together with the 5 ohm, because we are having what? The same current flowing. All right, so uh, let me just write this in short. So here, uh, the current across the current across resistor R5, resist uh, R5 is the same. So we are saying this current is the same as the current, as the current across uh, the resistor. All right, let's see our resistor here, the resistor R3 and R4 across the resistors, uh, as across the resistors R3 and R4. So if they have the same current, what are you going to do? You just combine these resistors together so that you remove. So meaning to say for this whole combination that we have here, uh, which is of the load, because this is our load resistor. So it means the load resistor, we are simply going to take everything at the load because it's, it's, the, it's drawing the current. This resistor is drawing the same current. This is drawing the same current because it's at the load, so we are just going to check this as our total load. So just combine uh, the resistors. All right, so you are going to combine your resistors. In this case, that's our load resistor is going to be R3 plus R4 plus R5. So it's going to be 12 plus 18 plus 32, which is going to give us uh, 62 ohms. So meaning to say, Considering our stages of uh, the Thevenin, remember you're supposed to remove the load resistor. That is the first concept of our Thevenin to remove what? The load resistor. Then we calculate uh, VTEV from there. All right, so the moment we remove this, we are removing everything in a series. All right, so these are the steps. We are going to remove what? The load resistor. Uh, remove RL and calculate uh, are there. All right, so from there, we are going to calculate the VTF, sorry, which is the Thevenin uh, voltage. All right, so let us remove this. If we remove these resistors in series, we'll be left with this R1 with V1, R2, and uh, V2. And the voltage sources take note positive, connected to positive. I think we had a similar question like this, or it was uh, positive to negative, but I just want to explain with another way, so we've got our resistor R1. Let's just hope you understand this method and uh, connect it to the voltage source V1. And we also have R2, that was our R2 here, connected to the voltage source. It's positive, also positive, positive there. So as you can see, this was the branch that was going to give us these resistors here, yeah, this branch from B, C, D. So we are just gonna open that branch because we said we have got to remove that. So we, if we are to remove, we are going to remain uh, with the points. But uh, as for our syllabus, we know that these points will be A, B. Yes, here there is A and B. According to our diagram, this is A, B. So here we're gonna be left with C, D according to our diagram. Uh, let's just put this as CD so that we do not confuse according to your diagram. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, remember, we've got R1 here, uh, V1, and we've got R2 and V2. 
from our voltages, this is uh, six versus 10, one comma two versus 12, all right? So we've got uh, six ohms versus 10 volts, uh, one comma two ohms versus 12 volts in this case, all right? So like I said, we are going to calculate the VTEV from this, uh, what is going to be our VTEV. So in order for us to have VTEV, uh, it, talked about a separate diagram where we are going to calculate the voltage across the branches to say, you have to find another point where you calculate VAB, VBC. If you did not understand that method, try by all means to understand this one. All right, in order for you to have your VTEV, you are going to consider, because this is the voltage that you are talking about across these branches. So you are going to consider the current because we've got two voltage sources here. So you are going to calculate the total current, which is uh, in this, uh, considering to our layout of the diagram, this is V1 at the, at the input, and we've got V2 at the output. So you are going to consider the current, in this case, flowing in this direction from V1. So this is like our total current. You can just even write it as I1, uh, which is the current flowing in this branch. All right, but this current is going to be branched to the other part uh, which is we are not having these branches C and D. So that's why we are considering this current in this loop. So that is the, the major part of this question to say, the current was supposed to be branched here to, to the load. But now as we are considering this circuit, it's, a, it's an open circuit. So there's nothing that is flowing. It's different from a short circuit. If it is a short circuit like this, it means there's a current that is flowing for a short circuit. But for an open there is no current that is going to flow in an open circuit. So the current is going to be considered in within this branch. So how are you going to calculate that current so that we can calculate the VTEV? All right, I'm gonna explain about VTEV. Uh, from this current that we're gonna calculate, you're going to consider these, uh, these voltage sources is positive, connected to positive. So you are going to subtract them. If it is a condition of a, a negative terminal like this, connected, a positive terminal like this, you are going to add your voltages. But if you are given a condition whereby these two are facing each positive, positive, you are going to subtract your voltages. So meaning to say the bigger one, which is V2 minus the smaller one. So you're going to have V2 minus V1 over the sum of the resistors, which are taking in this current, which is resistor one plus resistor two. So that will give us the current, uh, that's 12 minus 10, of uh, the sum of the resistors, which is six plus one comma two in this case. All right, so this will give us current one, which is the total current actually of our circuit. That will be 0 0.278 amps. So that is what you're going to obtain as the current. This is not a part of our question. We need to calculate VTEV. All right, so VTEV can be considered with these two formula. From the one that has got, um, we are going to consider your voltage sources uh, because you might have V1 here, this V2, you might have it here. Or on the other question, you might have this V1 here. So it is not because of the position where we see our V1 or where we see our V2. To find our VTEV, it is going to be according to the bigger voltage and is the smaller voltage. From the bigger voltage, we are going to subtract that to say 12 minus the voltage drop that is that we have between the, the current and the resistance in this case of R2. We are considering our VTEV across these points. So the resistor that we are considering from V2, which is uh, uh, from the bigger voltage, it's R2, V2 versus R2, but considering the total current. So from the bigger voltage, so like I said, it's not about the position. Where are you having these 12 volts? The 12 volts can be here. How you calculate VTEV, it's important. You, from the bigger voltage, which is uh, 12 volts in this case, let me write as V2, which is representing uh, 12 volts in this case, all right? So V2 is the bigger voltage. We are going to subtract the voltage drop of the current times the resistance, which is R2. Take note from the bigger voltage. From the smaller voltage, if 10 volts was here, if 10 volts was here and 12 volts was here being reversed, you are going to do the same thing. The smaller voltage, for the smaller voltage, you are going to add. So the smaller voltage is 10. So it's going to be 
uh, V1 plus the voltage drop according to this current caused across R1. So the voltage drop there is going to be I1 R1. That's how you are going to calculate your VDEF. So it is because of which one is bigger in value. So I want you to compare this question with the other question. I think it was April or, but it's 2022 exam. So that you redo that question, or we are going to redo that question together so that we also check with this method that I'm explaining here. So the bigger voltage minus the voltage drop across that voltage. The smaller voltage uh, is gonna be the, uh, for the smaller voltage, you're going to add the voltage drop across that smaller voltage. You are supposed to obtain the same answers for the voltage drop, all right? Which is taken or which is going to be another uh, a method from the method A that I explained uh, from that video that I'm talking about. All right, so here, let us calculate our VDF. From the bigger voltage, like I said, you're gonna subtract the voltage drop. So that's current times resistance, our current 0, 0.278 times R2, which is 1.2. So there we are going to obtain our VDF as uh, 11, comma, that's 11.666 volts, which is 11.66 uh, volts, All right? Which is, um, in this case, because these are rounded off figures, if you are to calculate it from this side, you're going to obtain your VTF as a V1, which is the smaller voltage you are supposed to add, which is 10 volts plus I1, which is 0 0.278 times R1, which is six. So on this part, you are going to obtain 11.668 uh, volts. This is because we are using the rounded figure on this value here. If you use the exact value of current one, you are going to obtain exactly same values here, all right? But uh, that is not a case. If you, had, if you used this side, you're going to take this answer. If you used this formula, you're going to take this answer. So that is your VDEF in this case, all right? Then uh, we go back to our diagram. Remember, uh, we have to find RTF, which is the resistance now, which is what we call the look-in resistance. How do you find this? We are now removing every voltage source that we see. The voltage sources will be taken off, replaced by their internal resistances. So we're gonna replace with internal resistance, internal resistance. Therefore, we can calculate our RTF. So you can just take it from this diagram here. Uh, the diagram that we are going to, uh, to use to calculate RTF, in this case, we are going to remove the voltage sources. We replace them with their internal resistances. So for V1, we short circuit it, we replace with uh, R1. For V2, we short circuit it, we replace with R2. So we are going to have a diagram of this nature, uh, whereby we've got uh, R2 being 1,2 ohms. Uh, that's our R2 here being 1,2 ohms. And this is our R1 being uh, six ohms. So we are going to calculate uh, RTF, which is the look-in resistance as we look across the terminals C and D. Remember, we've got the terminals C and D. All right, so the RTF is going to be, these two resistors are in parallel. So RTF is going to be the product uh, over the sum. Remember, two resistors in parallel gonna be product over sum. So that's R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, which is just gonna multiply six times uh, 1,2 over the sum of six plus 1,2. So that is going to give us RTF, which is uh, one ohm in this case. All right, so that is going to be our RTF. Okay, so let us just have our calculator here. I've got uh, six times uh, 1,2. Right, I just need a fraction first here. Uh, six by uh, 1,2. I'm forgetting the fraction, why? All right, that's six multiplied to 1,2 over the sum of six plus 1,2 like this. So this is going to be a one. Okay, so that would be our RTF, which is uh, one ohm. So from this one, we are going to use uh, everything now to the equivalent circuit diagram. Remember, this is seven in just like every other uh, part. At the end, you are going to combine it, superposition, you have to superimpose, not on, you have to work with it. So it's each and every diagram. So for seven in, you are going to have the equivalent diagram for seven in, whereby you have to return back 
the load resistor that we removed. And remember our load resistor, it's a combination of those resistors in series, which is the 12 ohm, the 1832, which gave us uh, 62 ohms at the end. So we are going to replace that back on our equivalent uh, circuit diagram. All right, so let us just have our Thevenin's equivalent. So you're gonna have our equivalent circuit diagram here. So on our equivalent circuit diagram, uh, remember we're gonna have VTEF, uh, RTEF. So we have got our VTEF, depending with which one I'm going to use, I'm just gonna use the first one. But if you want, you can use this VTEF or which is the second one. So we are going to have our VTEF connected in a series with RTEF. And this RTEF, uh, Connected back, we are going to have the points that we removed there, C and D. Between the point C and D, we are going to replace back our load resistor. So this is the equivalent circuit diagram of what? Of uh, Thevenin, whereby this is our VTEF. So VTEF is going to depend with which formula. Did you, if you use V1 plus IR1, you are going to use 11,68. If you use this one, you're going to use 11,66, uh, six, six, all right? So I'm just gonna take that one of 11,666 uh, six, 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 like this. Then this is our RTF. We calculated RTF, we got one ohm. Then across the load resistor in this case, you are not substituting only that resistor that you remove, but everything that you removed because we say it's in series and the current that flows across R5 is the same as across R4, is the same as across R3. So that's why we removed the wall of this resistor, which is 62. So we are going to return this as it is, which is uh, the 62 ohms, just like that. All right, so we've got uh, 62 ohms in this case. Then from there, we can calculate the current. Remember the current across the load resistor, since we know that this is a series circuit, so the current across the load resistor, this one is the same as the current across RTF also. So it means uh, to say the current across uh, the load resistor is going to be given as the voltage over resistance. So it's VTEF over RTF plus RL. So that is going to give us the load current, which is our VTEF, uh, 16,666 uh, over RTF, which is one plus uh, 62, All right? So that's it, we can simplify to obtain uh, the load current in this case, which was going to give us 0, 0,18517 uh, and so forth, which is uh, something like uh, 0, 0,185, all right? So you can just have it again on our calculator so that we can properly see, but I think this one is direct guys, okay? So that is uh, 11. Uh, comma six six like that over the sum. So this will be 63. One plus 63 is what? 63. So this is what you're going to have uh, at the end. So this will be 0, 0,185. All right. So that will be 0, uh, 0,185 amps. So remember, this is the current. So current measured in what? In amps. So that is how we can uh, calculate these typical questions. So it to depend if you used uh, this VTEF here, uh, VTEF of 11,668, uh, meaning to say your answer was going to be different from us. You're going to obtain your answer as, uh, let us just check here on our screen. We're gonna have this as uh, 11,668 like this. Your answer is going to be, 1,852, which is 1,85, which is one and the same thing. As you can see, these two cannot change this five. So it would be 0,185. So you are going to have exactly uh, the same answer when rounded off to three decimal places. So these are the typical questions that uh, they might give you. You just have to understand your circuit diagram. Having resistances like this is not supposed to scare us. What we are supposed to work is what is it that is happening across these resistors? Once you understand that these are resistors in series and they have the same current flowing, it means that you can simplify it from that concept uh, of knowing uh, that the current is the same. So it means if I remove one resistor, it does not affect my circuit. So I have to remove all of them at once because they are at the same output 
they have or they draw the same current uh, from this branch. So that is how you have to uh, answer these questions. Let us just continue to revise as we are towards exams.